Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have news and today's news is quite an incredible one. So, the guys at Epic has gone ahead to release Unreal Engine 4.23. And to be honest, I think this is one of the most massive updates I have actually ever seen. I'm telling you, we have over 15 new updates that is coming over to Unreal. And I just don't know how they did it although within the press statement they've gone ahead to say that the release includes 192 improvements that has been made and also submitted you know to the guys at epic and these improvements are actually made by unreal engine developers on github so the other time i was talking about collaboration and i think this is one of the best thing that has actually happened to the industry because the updates that we're getting today are way over 40 updates i'm telling you they are way over 40 updates because they range from real-time improvement to virtual texturing to the wacom support to landscape splines you know to data validation the sequencer they've also done a whole lot of things that has to do with pro video codecs platforms hdri backdrop material updates just so much to mention so i'm just gonna go ahead and talk about a few i just didn't even talk about anything that had to do with the hololens and you know the things that also had to do with skin weight there is an ias profile improvement there is a render dependency graph there is also uh, sdk upgrades so some of these things are actually in the beta some of them are experimental while most of them are actually functioning as at now and you know all of these things are major feature updates one of the main ones is chaos. So we talked about chaos the other time where we talked about, you know, the news for this tool coming out when it was still in its beta. And, you know, we talked about the fact that you can destroy things. It had geometry collection. Yes. Now this is available. Although the tool is still in beta in this version because, you know, they kind of demoed this at the GDC 2019. But yes, it is available for you to go ahead and use it right now. So if you want to use this tool, it comes with a couple of things. So those kind of things that you get to do in Houdini and the same kind of things that you get to do in Cinema 4D. Yes, you can now do them directly in Unreal because at this point you can have geometry collections, which can either include static mesh or, you know, meshes that you can just put together and you can go ahead and fracture them. Now, the fracturing can either make use of radial fracturing, clustered Voronoi fractures and maybe a planar cutting, which simply makes use of noise for you to get way more natural results. And at the same time, you can also add some sort of clustering. So you can add clustering to have sub fracturing that allows you to control where and where you want to add complexities just in case you want to fracture. It's actually something you call second level fracture. So you have like the main fracture and then you can have like those tiny debris and pieces happening directly there. Now you can go ahead and still cache this simulation so that it can allow you to interactively play with the environment and also play with the characters that are there the fields as well are also a way for you to actually interact and control the simulation so you can see how many things that are packed into just chaos and that's why i think that these guys have actually talked about chaos and it is something that has come to stay and it's actually good to see that you don't necessarily need to fracture in a different app right now and maybe save it out as a lambic or you know save it out as something totally different you can now do those things directly here in unreal next up is the real-time ray tracing improvement so the real-time ray tracing improvement has actually come a long way and this tool is also in beta and it has received many optimization and stability improvement which simply means that right now you can have improved the noiser you know quality for ray trace features increased ray trace global illumination and also expanded direct x12 supports for unreal engine there is also a multi-bounce reflection feedback that you can get right now and can have additional geometry and material support there is also the virtual texturing so the virtual texturing is an alternative way that you can go ahead and you know stream textures from your hard drive you know to unreal engine this is actually supposed to replace the previous mip based streaming 
and this can actually go ahead and reduce you know texture memory and increase performance right now they're saying that this is something that they would like to use but however sampling from the virtual texture is way more expensive than you know the regular form of sampling so if you want to know more about this you should go over to the link directly in the description and you'll be able to find that there there is also the new you know on real insight so this is practically made for developers so that they can be able to analyze and collect data about unreal engines behavior in a much more uniform fashion we already talked about hololens and the fact that unreal engine is supporting hololens right now yes it's also coming there is also the virtual production stuff they've been talking about over and over time that you can be able to now scout you know as maybe a filmmaker by using vr and you know do some sort of live link and all that there's also the niagara or nigara uh improvement that has been made and this is presently integrated into the chaos system and the nigara particle system can now you know be generated by using simulation that exists in the chaos system and it also has support for gpu we previously talked about the skin weighting profile that they were saying they were going to go ahead and implement there is now an open sound control there is also a csv to svg tool so in case you have let's say comma separated values you can now visualize them graphically and i think this is definitely going to help the artist to make some very very informed decisions the sequencer has also received a couple of love i mean when it gets to do with the usability and also the curve editor there has been a couple of improvements that has also been made to this so for the curve editor you can now go ahead and extend this as much as you want and i think this has been a request that a whole lot of people are asking and you can now add you know some setting tools and i think tools that has to do with new modes new toolbar buttons and custom data filters for smoothing things out there's also one cool feature that have been added the fact that you can go ahead and dock this thing out and probably transfer this to a different screen so just in case you're making use of a multi-screen setup i think this is definitely going to be cool for you to go ahead and work with and one of the cool things that they've gone ahead to actually improve in this current version is the editor so right now they're saying if you're someone that actually works with a large scene probably if you start working with this version you're definitely going to notice some significant you know improvements the material editor has also been improved and there is actually a tool that i am falling in love with this tool has to do with the place interactive actor with foliage too so what this tool is is you can now you know go ahead and place things as much as you want directly on your scene it makes use of some sort of brush that you can actually paint across your scene and from the guys at epic they're actually saying that this foliage tool will act the same way static meshes will so in case you are working on the terrain and you update the terrain automatically this is also going to go ahead and you know auto update at the same time once you're updating the terrain there's also a brand new hdri you know backdrop actor that allows you to go ahead and light your environment light whatever thing that you have and get that realistic background and realistic lighting that you want so for example if you want to project some sort of light directly to your object of course you can go ahead and you know use this how this works is you're definitely going to get an object and put it directly in your scene assign a hdri map and a skylight will automatically be you know generated that would provide an ambient light and from that light you'll be able to get accurate reflections and you know the floor surfaces would automatically be able to capture shadows that are being cast from your object and i think this is actually one of those good things that would save you so much time instead of going to other third party applications to get that realistic render or let's say finding something that has to do with a shadow catcher to get that there is a dynamic shadow bias improvement a brand new dual height fog for exponential height fog as well and there's just a whole lot of things that these guys have gone ahead to create i actually didn't even talk about the ias profile light so there is an ias profile improvement they've added there is also a brand new video codex that you can go ahead and use so there is a couple of them just in case you want to actually make use of them right now you can now you know go ahead and export pro media files to apple you know prores encoders and so much more there is also you know playback for 4k videos if in case you want to play 4k directly 
in Unreal. You can also go ahead and play them at 60 frames, 30 frames, although 8K and 16K are presently not supported at the time of this recording. Probably these guys are going to go ahead and add, you know, a whole lot more other features, especially if you actually like to create content that entails videos directly inside. There's also SDK upgrades that actually has to do with, with PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, Steam, the iOS, Android, Linux, a whole lot of them. Stadia is actually included directly inside this one as it stands, Oculus, and also, you know, the HoloLens. So these are a whole lot of things coming to just one release so in case you guys want to check these things out link is going to be in the description where you can find all of these things and you know you can know what runtime that they are having for the sdks that are coming and how and how you can also go ahead and work with these things depending on what you want to go ahead and create and at this point i think uh unreal engine has gotten to that place where you would essentially do almost everything you want by just having blender by your side and unreal by your side every other thing that you want you can actually figure them out with these two parties i also know that for sure the procedural stuff if you want to make procedural assets you still definitely need houdini at this point probably we're going to see the rise of procedural tool creation in in other dcc apps but as it stands right now unreal has actually gotten to that point where all you need is just maybe one piece of software and you can probably do a whole lot of things directly inside this tool and so i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section if you like this video go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to turn on notification and if you're new here it's gonna be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on notification so you don't miss the next video and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace